my honest to God way, only way in was to read backstage. Mm -hmm. And it was like my daily thing. It was like I, I sat there circling. And then I would also buy American Theater Magazine at the time. I'm sure there's so many things online now. Mm -hmm. But at that point, it was the way in which I got to see all the regional theaters, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I would circle anything, the plays. I would read. I would go to the, like the drama bookstores at the time. I'm sure you get that all online now. But you would read all the plays that have just come out, the new works. You'd go to see all the new plays. And you would find roles that you thought were right for you and then know that they were going to be done regionally. And so then I would like call up and try and find write letters to be a casting director's assistant where I could be a reader mm -hmm. for the people coming in. And then I sneakily hoped that at the end of the day that casting director was like, maybe you can read for one of the roles too. <laughs> and so once in a while I did that and I actually ended up getting a role. Mm -hmm. And that led to the equity card, which then led to maybe doing a lot of equity shows out of town, which led to an agent seeing me in all those because they represented people that I was working right. with. And then one day, it was J. Michael Bloom, it was an agency at the time, that I called up. It was like a cold call, like shaking, and I was like, um, would you be able to take me? And all of a sudden, someone got on the line, and they're like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And I remember it was like I wanted bells to go off, right. because I thought, how come this just worked? But it took like three or four years right. of pounding the pavement, reading the backstage, going on all the auditions, asking to be a reader. Right, right, right. And so, then the agent sort of opened the doors a little bit. My first TV audition did come through an agency. Mm -hmm. But my guess is you could also, if you're new at this, you would find who casts the television shows and you would write a letter and say, I would give anything to be your reader. Mm -hmm. And then, then you could just go in and start watching and learning. For the audition, I actually didn't quite know what I was doing, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to embrace the period and go rent a wig or buy a wig, and then I went to a costume shop that does theatrical stuff, and I actually, the, the character description when Rose enters was, she enters the room as if in an MGM musical, mm -hmm. and I think they even said something about a feather boa, so I went to this costume shop, unbeknownst to them, I got like two pieces, and I like took one off with a feather boa and sewed it on this like beautiful robe that oh, I think was like a queen from like Snow White or something and I, I embraced it in a way that you would for a theater audition mm -hmm. and so I went to the valley in California and I put myself on no I didn't put myself on tape but the wonderful casting director put me on tape and that's all I did and then the next thing maybe about a month or two later I heard I could be flown to New York and I could meet Amy Sherman Palladino and her husband mm -hmm. Dan and and then there we met and I'm sure there were a lot of people still up for the role so then I flew back and then I was like I'm sure I didn't get it and then I got another phone call saying hey gotta fly back again and I was like well this time I'm gonna go see some Broadway plays yeah. I'm gonna treat myself and so I entered the room with about four different costumes tried on all of them wore a lot of them in the audition even I actually exited the the room and said can I take a moment and then I like changed because I wanted to show them a different look oh, a more sorry, regal yeah. look and then I got the role, and it's been, you know, to, to kind of go harp on like a little bit back to what you said, uh, it's interesting that I'm in my 50s, I've definitely been around for a long time, I went to graduate school at NYU, I've done, you know, decades worth of theater, and I, I was very scared about being a woman of this age and not having work, mm -hmm. and I feel really, really blessed that someone like Amy is um, Sherman Palladino is writing women's roles on that show mm -hmm. that are so intricate, complicated, um, idiosyncratic, funny, you know, tragic, and that often I've been working here and not had a lot of women that were at the helm, mm -hmm. and nor were there women that were the leads of the shows, and this one is just so female-centered, and yeah. it's really beautiful. I do feel like for auditions, like don't hold back. If you believe that the character should have like a glass of wine, bring in something that looks like wine, bring in the glass and actually sit it there and drink. It makes you feel like you've got the role, mm -hmm. you know, inside you. Honestly, even today, I gave an interview earlier today and it's like the fear of doing something completely wrong or even walking in here right now, it, Every single time I feel like there's a possibility that, it, that I'm going to be seen as a fraud, that I'm not going to be funny or, you know, allow people to either laugh or, or cry or feel something. Like, I, I, in answer to that great question, like, I feel like that is with me all the time. And I lose my line sometimes on set and I suddenly find myself, like, covered with sweat and heart palpitations because I think, oh, my, I'm disappointing the people that Amy and Dan have written it. Mm -hmm. 
But I guess the only thing to do is to forgive yourself and to say, you know what, everybody, everybody, even the Meryl Streeps or the Kate Blanchett's or whomever, probably has these deep insecurities mm -hmm. and, and, and just to allow yourself to know that it's okay. You know, like I even, you know, Tony Shalhoub, he's like a hero, right? I work with him and I sometimes think, I can't believe I get to work with Tony. But he has days in which things are harder and I see him, you know, he does the same thing. He bucks up against like, wow, how am I gonna move through this? And he just sort of breathes and he's like, okay, here we go. And you just have to kind of be your own cheerleader. Thank you.